What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, you are going to learn how to implement text to speech in your Android application using Android Studio and Kotlin. So we're basically going to look at the code and implement the code and then test the code to do text to speech or to add text to speech to your application. And yeah, it's not that difficult. It's really just a couple of lines of code, but I'm just going to go over them and explain how to actually use them and what is important to consider. All right, so let's get started just after you hit that like button. And also don't forget to subscribe because you can expect a bunch more great Android videos in the future and you don't wanna miss out. So let's get started. <music> What you can see here is that we have this little screen with a little text here and an added text in which we can enter a text. And once we click on the button below, this you can see test, that text to speech is to executed. Okay, so text to speech is pretty good in English, and this will, of course, only work if text to speech is installed on your phone. And let's check it out. What we need is, of course, a little UI to test it. So I have this text view, then I have an edit text in which I can enter a text, and then I have this button. All right, and the idea is that whatever is entered in the edit text will be spoken once we press the button. Now, going to our main activity where all the magic happens, and if you want to use text-to-speech, what is important is that we extend our main activity with the text-to-speech on init listener. Doing so, as you can see, you can do that by adding a comma and then the listener that you want to add. So now our whole main activity will also follow the structure of on init listener and it will need to implement the on init function. Okay, so it won't work without this on init. You can very easily test that. Once you get rid of it, you can see that the main activity wants to add the members. So wants us to implement the members for example, the on init, okay? And of course, I'm going to bring it back here because we're gonna need it. All right, now, the first thing we need to do is to create a variable, which is our text-to-speech variable, and I'm going to call that one TTS, standing for text-to-speech. It's a nullable, and I'm gonna set that null because I'll initialize it in our onCreate method. Here you can see that our text-to-speech variable here will be assigned a text-to-speech object in which we need to pass the context and the listener. So here we can say this in both because the context is the main activity, so it should be spoken in the main activity. And at the same time, the main activity is also the listener. And this here is only possible because it is actually an on init listener here. So otherwise, our main activity couldn't be the listener, okay? That's why it's important to understand that. Okay, then we have this button speak button and once we click on it, I want to check if there is a text in a, the edit text. So if there's no edit text, if it's empty, then I want to show a toast, which is just gonna say enter a text to use TTS and otherwise call this speak out method in which you pass in a text. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the edit text text and making a string out of it and passing it to the speak out method. Now let's look at the speak out method. Quick pause. So you're learning something about Android in this video and I hope you enjoy it. If you want to learn everything that you need to know to become a real Android developer, then definitely check out my Android masterclass because in this course, you're going to build a bunch of great applications along your journey to becoming an Android developer. First, you're going to learn the Kotlin basics. Then you're going to learn to build one app after another. And while you do that, you get a bunch of demos, which will really dig deep into the concepts as well as presentations, which will help you to understand what you're learning. So don't miss out and get the course right now. You can find the link in the description below. The speak out method, what it does is it calls the speak method of TTS. So of the text to speech class, it just calls the speak method. The speak method, it needs the text that it should speak. Then the queue type, so text to speech queue flush is what I'm using. So this will just stop the other element that was already in the queue and will start speaking. We can test that real quickly. 
This is you can a see test. If I this click is it a twice, test, and I want to see the if old it entry works. is getting deleted, and only the new entry is there. So it's not queued up, but it's actually flushed. And this is what I'm using with queue flushed. You can use different types here as well. You can add queue or you can use the queue add, which will just add things up. So if you have multiple text to speeches after another, it will call them in a row. So let's check that out. Okay, so I this is a test and I want to see if it works. This is a test and I want to see if it works. You can see I clicked this multiple times after and another and it constantly it spoke the text. So that's what happens when you use Q add and Q flush, of course, gets rid of the old entry and only speaks the most currently called one. All right, if you want to know more about the speak method, you can check it out here. It's rather interesting. So it says speaks the text using the specified queuing strategy and speech parameters. The text may be spanned with TTS spans. So if you want to have some time in between, this method is asynchronous. So what happens is that the method just adds a request to the queue of text to speech requests and then returns. The synthesis might not have finished or even started at the time when this method returns. In order to reliably detect errors during synthesis, we recommend setting utterance progress listeners. So this is going to be a little bit too advanced. We are not going to require that, but if you really want to dig deeper into it, then that's definitely something that you should look into on how to use this on utterance progress listener. And what's really interesting for us is actually the text, the queue mode. Well, you can add some parameters for the request, but it can be null as well. And the utterance ID, if you want to have a unique identifier for this particular request, then you can pass that in as well. So now that's our speak out method. And let's go to the on init method because that's the one that is required. It's really important. We need to override that. And what happens here is that we get a status because we know on init, if it, there is an on, then this is something that will be called automatically and not by us. So we get a status which is of type integer. So we can check if the status is equal to text to speech success. So if text to speech can be used, then this one will be true. So the statement here, and we can go ahead and set the language. So here I'm setting it to English. So I store the result of whatever is the result of this setting. So something could go wrong here. Setting the language could go wrong. For example, it could not be installed or it could be missing. So what we're checking next is if the result is actually language data missing or if the result is text to speech language not supported. So for example, if the language is not supported by the phone or if it's just not installed, then this will not work. So then we, in our case, just lock something. So you could, of course, inform the user about it and tell him to install text to speech once he presses on the text to speech button. But we're going to keep it simple here. It's really just a very basic demo. So you can see I'm just adding this log entry here saying the language specified is not supported. And then we have this else statement here as well, which is for this status comparison. So if text to speech was unsuccessful from the start, then you can already see, okay, initialization failed. So something else might have come up or something else is an issue or creates an issue. Okay, so that's the on init. Now let's look at on destroy. On destroy is called just before our application will shut down or just before this activity will shut down. And what I want to do is I want to see if the text-to-speech object is empty or not. If it's not empty, then stop it and then shut it down and then call super on destroy. What we do with this is we make sure that our program closes correctly and shuts down correctly without leaving any fragments of our text-to-speech in the background or things like that. Okay, so that's it. You can see it's rather basic actually. So there's not that much that you need to implement in order to use text-to-speech. It's a very powerful tool and it's rather easy to implement. And I really like that. So I, it's great if you have something like that where you really need to write very little code and Android is taking care of everything itself, which is amazing. And we're going to use text-to-speech, of course, in our application, in our seven-minute workout app. So 
I hope you enjoy that. All right, so now you know how to use text-to-speech. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like and also hit that subscribe button because there is a bunch more Android-related content coming up and also hit that notification bell if you really want to get notified about the good news that are coming up and the good new features that you're gonna learn how to implement in Android Studio and Kotlin. And check out one of those two videos.